Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to everybody, and welcome to our first session for Logic Applications and Design. This is a special seminar specifically for automotive applications and industrial applications using Logic devices. We have a number of wonderful presenters on our presentation team today who you'll be hearing from. Our next presenter will be Ashish Jha, who is our product manager for our Analog and Logic Business Group. He specializes in new product definitions, specifically in automotive devices. Christian Bachhaus will also be presenting. He is our application marketing manager in the Automotive Logic Group. He will be presenting on some very specific technical issues. And my name is Tom Wolf. I'm the technical applications manager for Nexperia. For those of you located in the Americas, I am one of your prime contacts for Logic issues and other products within the Nexperia portfolio. So again, welcome. A couple questions or a couple answers for some uh, issues that you might have. First, regarding copies of the materials. Materials and a recording of this session will be available after this presentation. You will receive an email which gives you information and the link to listen to the recording again or to download all of the materials that we'll be presenting today. The next question too is why are we calling this automotive and industrial logic focus? Um, in the past, it was very obvious that automotive and industrial and commercial were really separate requirements. But what we've seen over time is that the requirements for industrial continue to increase, more reliability, more difficult environments, that now it's getting very close that industrial and automotive share a lot of the same requirements. Um, even most unusual is that we're seeing requests from the medical field, specifically for very high reliability devices. So therefore, we're putting these two sessions together. Some of you from the automotive group will be looking at it from that point of view, but for those of you joining from industrial, you will also be able to understand how these parts are used in very high reliability applications. Um, our agenda today, we will be covering specifically the application side of logic for the industrial and automotive marketplace. With that, we will start out with what is the AEC Q100 specification? How is it different than a standard commercial device and what does it give you? And then look at some of the most common automotive logic applications. Again, industrial will find that this information is also pertinent. We'll then look at the logic families and the package combinations and the preferred packages for the automotive marketplace. And then we have a technical session specifically on analog switch design because analog switches are used so extensively in the automotive applications as well as in the industrial applications as well too. And then another specific technical application information, um, understanding thermal resistances. With that then, I would like to pass the, uh, the presentation over to Ashish who will start us on understanding AEC Q100 specifications. Go ahead, sir. Thank you very much, Tom. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, everyone. So in this section, we will go through our Q100 policy. Apart from that, we will also cover our automotive value proposition. But before we move ahead, we need to understand why these factors are important. So these are basically important because of the strict reliability and quality requirement from our automotive customers. And the two most important challenges being faced in the automotive applications are, first of all, the semiconductor component being operated in uh, uh, automotive application uh, uh, operate in very harsh condition. And the second, the lifetime uses of those devices. So if you look at the component operating within, within a television, it's normally operate between zero to 40 degrees centigrade. Considering if you add the heating effect, then maybe like T ambient will reach to 60 degrees centigrade. On the other hand, if you look at a component operating within a car, it will likely to start at minus 20 degrees centigrade. And in some cases, especially if it is operating in an engine com compartment, then temperature can go up, up to 150 degrees centigrade. And this makes the reliability and quality requirement very high. The another point was the lifetime uses. So if you considered a normal uh, electronics consumer device, for example, like mobile phone, generally they have average light, lifetime of three years. On the on other hand, the car generally have lifetime of seven to eight years. So those semiconductor component also need to operate for longer period of time. So considering those, we have got our uh, we have aligned our uh, uh, 
logic strategy also. So our logic strategy is basically on the foundation of three pillars. One is to be maintain a, to be a preferred automotive supplier. Second, to to adhere to the strict automotive standards, and third, a cost reduction partner partner to our automotive customers. So when I say maintain automotive preferred suppliers, we need basically focus on quality of supply, quality of product, and quality of design and support, especially considering the strict reliability and quality requirement from the industry. Especially, I would like to focus here, like for example, in the quality of supply, we focus on the maverick locked handling, we focus on the <clears throat> Uh, CPK values. Similarly, in the quality of the product, we focus on the uh, Six Sigma process. We focus on the uh, pad testing, and and the third point, the quality in design in support. This is kind of very critical, especially from the automotive customer uh, perspective. We specifically provide our customers with PPAP document, which contain a detailed Q100 related reliability. Uh, and quality report apart from the all the uh, functional tests now the second point uh, our product is, uh, adhered to the strict standard in in the production for example uh, all of all of our facilities are uh, are ts16949 certifieds Apart from that, all of our devices are ACQ100 qualified. And if the devices has copper wire, then they, they adhere to Q006 standards. I also mentioned that we are basically also want to be a cost reduction partner to our automotive customer. And we basically enable this through inno innovation through integration. Apart from that, we also focus on the low cost package innovation. As you have already seen, uh, we have uh, launched number of uh, uh, miniaturized packages. Apart from that, we also utilize our economy of scale and economy of uh, knowledge. So basically in our process, first of all, if any device is released, it is being used in the standard production for couple of months approximately 6 to 12 months and after that only uh, that only if if it a uh, further qualification is done according to the q100 and if if the quality in production is realized then only uh, we moved it for the supply of the automotive customers so earlier in earlier slide we uh, i mentioned that we want to be a preferred supplier and here i will focus a little bit more uh, uh, more in detail <clears throat> So we, with our Q100 policy, we ensure that our quality and development and production, we have proper, we have placed a proper program for process product and package quality monitoring system. For example, for process cost, cost, uh, control, we have got, we have, uh, we have adopted Six Sigma design philosophy which ensured that all end user application designed to the data set lim limit can tolerate a shift as, as, as high as one and a half sigma in, in Expedia manufacturing process. As the process control limit are much tighter than one and a half sigma, this virtually guarantees trouble-free end user application. Apart from doing full DC set testing, we also do, a, a, we also during electrical test process, we do PAT. So basically what we do, we do average test limits or statica, statistical test limits to screen out the outliers within the automotive lots. Although the outliers may be like qualified for the standard uh, customers, but they are totally out of concern for the automotive customers. And also to uh, ensure the continuous reliability within Expedia, we maintain extensive reliability monitory program that often exceeds the AAC requirement. And the result of this program is published every half yearly. And this, this is called QSUM report. And you can always re request this report via your Nexperia sales representative. So one of the important uh, uh, point uh, is that like uh, we try to focus on our dual sourcing strategy, especially if from the other facilities. For example, if you see here, uh, we have got the different uh, front end location like ASMC, ICN, ICN8, where we can uh, diversify our risk. Similarly, for the back end, we have got in the Bangkok in China, different location. 
depending upon the different packages. In, in the first, our automotive strategy slide, uh, I mentioned that uh, we adhere to certification, which assesses the production facilities capability on different parameters in order to deliver zero defect. For instance, like uh, uh, we adhere to VDA uh, certification. Basically, VDA is a German quality management system standard, which is dedicated for automotive supplier. It basically aud audited our product and processes and give a certain percentage. For the automotive, they give certification only if the audit score passes 90%. And all of our facilities are above 90%. Similarly, we have also got TS16949 certification, and this is basically a framework which is established by car and automobile manufacturer to manage the, again, to manage the production and process to uh, ensure a zero defect strategy. We also have uh, our facilities are also ISO, ISO 16949 certified. So in earlier slides, I discussed about our automotive strategy and how we align our Q100 policy and all our supplies in order to meet the stringent requirement for the, our automotive customers. In these slides, I will more focus upon our focus upon that we are not only create value proposition just in terms of product or process, but also through the customer support. For instance, we try to be secure, reliable, and prefer partner to our customer. We often, uh, if, if, if you look at it, uh, look at our way of working, we provide full support to our automotive customers. Uh, we meet all their zero defect re requirements. We guarantee for the automotive application, and we also provide 90 day extension to a standard PCN approval cycle. Apart from that, we have got high traceability for our automotive devices because, uh, because of Q100 suffixes. Only Q100 de device are flagged as automotive in our production. This is a special process to ensure quality of the product as well as supply. We have got a special management process to, we have got a special process to manage the order and delivery of the Q100 products. Apart from that, these products have got highest priority in our logistic. And uh, uh, one of the important uh, aspect of our automotive portfolio is that it is a very, we have got a wide range of portfolio. We have over more than 1000 devices, Q100 type devices in our portfolio. We have got very large range of functional categories like translator, gate switches, shift registers. And uh, we have also got uh, uh, a different uh, package, a variety of package to meet the requirement of the automotive customers. So this was basically a value proposition for the uh, our uh, Nexpedia automotive logic. I think in next session, I think Christian will take over to focus more upon application side. Um, also from my side, good morning, good afternoon and good evening. Um, in this section, I would like to give some examples and an overview of our view of um, automotive applications. Um, maybe you can switch to the next slide. Um, yes, we have to understand and have to look at uh, applications in automotive as well as in other um, uh, sections um, because we want to know where our the opportunities for our products are and uh, further on also what requirements and needs there are for our internal product development. Um, and uh, we have a rough, um, let's say, split of the um, applications in car communication and car electrification here. So, and I've just put in a few examples for focus application products and uh, also uh, what is our, uh, um, our future growth activities. Here um, for the focus applications, we um, have a, a rising um, or let's say an increasing um, demand in, out in infotainment systems. Uh, they get more and more integrated and more sophisticated. And uh, we see um, more telematics boxes in cars also driven by politics. And of course, the ADAS systems uh, for driver assistant uh, systems is also um, a growing um, application inside the car. 
um, for the car electrification, uh, um, greater trend also for uh, the last few years was the LED lighting. Um, we see more and more battery management systems demand, um, in particular for the new electric vehicles, but also for hybrid vehicles. And uh, a common application, which is also um, used um, and uh, will ever be used, will be is the uh, standard DC-DC conversion um, from, from, for various kinds of uh, converters. Um, the products that we can offer um, for the communication part, which is more the small signal part, is mainly auto sense and interface uh, translators for general voltage translation, but also for I2C and SPI and other dedicated protocols. And uh, we have a lot of transceivers in our portfolio, um, also with very small and flat uh, XQFN packages. Um, in, in for the LED lighting and uh, the other car electrification, we see um, many of our shift registers being successfully in use. And uh, um, for, let's say, noise reduction aspects, we have um, lots of Schmidt trigger input gates um, in our portfolio. And also, let's say, for, let's say, generic application like simple delay circuits, we can offer our flip-flops to be used for that. Our future growth um, activities uh, we also have. We will um, cover that more in the next section when Javed will present our, um, our uh, let's say, growth uh, portfolio activities. Um, here we have some power management ICs uh, on the future roadmap uh, with load switches and e-fuses. And in the car electrification, we will also offer some gate drivers um, for motor control and DC-DC conversion, which is also a nice complementary product for our already existing MOSFET, um, a power MOSFET uh, portfolio that uh, we have in another business group. And further on, we will also look at um, battery management systems and uh, uh, there's lots of diagnosis um, uh, required for safety and also um, cell balancing and there's a need for analog switches um, and also for general BMS ICs um, but that's still um, a future product uh, ambition. So we can go to the next slide. Yes, this is the uh, LED lighting application, and uh, um, there's uh, an example that I've put on here in an, well, a true design in that we had um, at an LED matrix headlight. Um, for the LED matrix headlight, uh, uh, for let's say a modern uh, car headlight with curved light and selective beams and so on, there's really a requirement to um, individually control um, the various um, LED strings uh, in the matrix and uh, an opportunity to uh, meet this, to, to implement this is to use um, our shift registers where you can uh, stream in serial bit streams and then uh, have a one clock cycle for um, um, enabling them. So the pattern that is put in is um, then controlling uh, whether the LEDs are being enabled or not. So we have quite a portfolio for shift registers, for example, in here in this uh, block diagram, in this picture here, you can see the HC595, um, which is an 8-bit serial in parallel out shift registers. And uh, we have some others, for example, the LVC HC959 with integrated voltage translation and for higher current uh, capabilities, also the NPIC uh, shift registers, which can support up to 100 milliampere output current and have open drain outputs. Another example I've put here that you can see in the <coughs> In the picture below with uh, the uh, flashing indicator light here, um, there's a trend to um, implement these indicator lights uh, in the sequential, as you can see on the picture. And there we also had a design in with our um, LV164 shift register, which is a bit of a simpler one, and uh, in conjunction with the NE555 uh, timer device. So we can go to the next uh, slide. Um, another important and growing um, application area is the driver assistance part. Um, there we have large central processing units and also sophisticated sensors like cameras and other actuators. 
And um, as we can see here in the block diagram, there's plenty of peripheral elements uh, next uh, to each processor and uh, associated with that also a lot of communication. And, and uh, since all these processors are becoming, let's say, smarter and smaller and more advanced um, alongside with that, the, the voltage supply um, uh, level is also going down. Um, if you look at modern smartphone processors, they have now a voltage uh, supply voltage of 1.1 volt or even below. And peripheral devices are very often still in um, higher voltage areas such as 5 volt. And uh, there's a lot of need for uh, voltage translation. And I've marked here some in, in uh, some uh, green arrows here to detect where we can see in this example requirement for voltage translation and um, apart from that we also need simple gates for signal combination and IO expansion where again we can also use uh, multiplexers and shift registers. So um, one example for our new products um, is uh, the AutoSense translator family LSF, NXS, NXB which can support 2, 4 and 8 bit um, parallel um, translation and uh, also we see lots of uh, analog digital multiplexers and sensors here. Maybe, uh, yeah, please switch to the next slide. Um, for the AutoSense translators, uh, which are relatively new in our portfolio, I've made an, over, made an overview here. Um, we can see the three um, AutoSense translators, which are general, um, and one uh, NXS 0506, which is specifically used for SD card protocols. And the first one, the LSF, is um, a simple pass transistor topology, and that requires external pull-up resistors and pull-up voltage sources. Um, so it's um, kept in uh, kept relatively simple, but can be used with relatively high data rates, and um, it is extremely flexible. So it doesn't have any active drive capability because it's just a pass transistor. Um, but it's uh, very handy and uh, very smart. So you can use it for um, uh, using mixed voltage um, uh, translation levels uh, at the same in the same device. The NXS is a mixture of a pass transistor and one-shot devices. That means that the uh, rising edge is being amplified by internal uh, so-called one-shot circuits. That means if a rising edge is detected, then the internal circuit is uh, pushing the rising edge to the outside and uh, the falling edge and, uh, is uh, transferred via the same pass transistor or a similar pass transistor as for the LSF. And uh, also here we can uh, use it for I square C and also USB IC, IC um, all kinds of uh, kind of uh, voltage translation protocols. And the NXB, the third one, is a purely push-pull um, topology with one shots for both um, rising and falling edges and no pass transistor. And uh, that is more, uh, let's say, um, for push-pull applications for both uh, ends and protocols like um, SPI, JTAG, UART, and so on. And uh, finally, we have a dedicated um, SD card uh, protocol uh, translator with, uh, let's say, up to 208 megahertz clock speed and 104 megabit per second. And uh, yeah, next slide, please. <laughs> Another important area is uh, the infotainment. Similar to ADAS, we also have uh, um, very powerful processors which are large, uh, mainly taken also from, from smartphones and have low voltage. And uh, we also see here many peripherals and therefore many, um, let's say, opportunities for transceivers for other voltage translators. And uh, an example for them is here our new AXP um, dual supply transceiver family, um, which can cover, um, or which, which can translate from 0 0.9 to 5.5 .5 volt and uh, comes also in a nice uh, DHV uh, QFN packages, uh, which are leadless and uh, very small, which is important in infotainment. 
And uh, we have also dedicated translation uh, devices like the LVC 3144, which is also available in AVC process technology. And uh, there you can see the block, the small block diagram here, and it can support um, SPI, which means three signals in one and uh, one signal in the other direction. And uh, together with it, uh, an output enables signal. Yeah, the block diagram here shows um, a telematics platform for 4G and also 5G. And uh, there we can see uh, central processing units and, and a DRAM and plenty of um, peripheral elements. And uh, along with that, uh, many different uh, yeah, communication protocols like JTAG, SPI, and um, yeah, various others like CAN and also general purpose and UART. Um, so there's lots of uh, opportunities for our um, translation products. Next slide, please. Um, let's say a more, com a more power oriented device um, where we, let's say, um, uh, are also present in the control logic is the DC DC um, converter. Um, there's lots of them also in in the uh, modern automobile architecture. We see that a lot in electric vehicles and in 48 volt um, uh, vehicles. And uh, what we do here, uh, what 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 the the need is there for having signal integrity in the control logic and there is naturally quite some noise uh, in these systems. And um, uh, since we have a portfolio of Schmidt trigger input uh, devices, it makes sense uh, to also show why they are needed here. You can see on the right side, the principle of the Schmidt trigger. You have a noisy signal U. And um, if you only take a buffer, you will not, with, uh, let's say, suppress um, the two noise pulses you can see, and uh, with the Schmidt trigger and the hysteresis, the noise can be sec um, successfully attenuated. So Schmidt triggers um, can be very useful and putting them here into the control circuitry um, to control the gate drivers for the high side, low side switching. And uh, we can see in the schematics of these kind of um, DC-DC converters that they're used to um, uh, combine um, the the um, digital signals coming from the controllers and also from the sensors for over voltage, um, over, over current and over temperature uh, sensors. And uh, they all need to be combined and need to be, uh, let's say, protected. And uh, it must be assured that the signal uh, has is stable and that can very well be done using uh, one of our Schmidt trigger devices uh, as shown here in the application example block diagram. You can detect the Schmidt trigger um, input capability in the data sheet um, in the uh, parameter in, in the parameter description for if you find VT plus, VT minus, and v, VH, which is for the hysteresis voltage in the static characteristics, that is indicating that the device has a Schmidt trigger input. Um, next slide, please. And finally, um, I want to point out that we also support um, uh, the experimental activities with our uh, logic devices um, by providing these kind of smart footprint boards. Uh, we can see, for example, to the, the rightmost one, um, uh, there are various footprints supported. Um, uh, you can directly use them. You can, um, let's say, break these simple uh, footprint boards apart, um, as you can see. Uh, altogether, they have the a format of a credit card and uh, they can be used as giveaways, but you can also use them for, for experimental purposes and solder the device on it and, and have access to all the connectors. And um, below is a list of footprints that are supported with these devices. And we have these three different kinds of uh, footprint boards that can be um, requested and uh, that we like to send out for experimenting with our products. Good. Thank you for the section. Ashish, okay. Thank you. Yeah. Thank, thank you, Christian. So in this uh, section, basically, I will uh, cover the uh, logic family and package combination. Next slide, please.
but I will start first of all I will start with our portfolio so there is general notion that when we say logic it means control logic like AND gates NAND gates or other gates but if you look if you look at our portfolio it has very wide range of uh, uh, it has it is a, we have very broader portfolio it addresses very wide range of requirement to your applications it has got very wide range of functionality as you can see here and they are broadly categorized into the four category interface uh, asynchronous logic synchronous logic interface logic and log and log logic if you see interface logic basically it comprises of voltage translator or level shifter which basically solve the incompatibility between different devices supplied by different power domains and our portfolio we have got kind of very broad range of translators so we have simple trans unidirection trans translators to uh, to bidirectional uh, translators and now we are also currently releasing uh, step by step a more complex translator like autosense translator as christian has already highlighted in his previous slides then we have got analog uh, we have got switches which can be either used for isolation or multiplexing demultiplex the multiplexing functions we also have got very a broad range of uh, switches to address uh, uh, automotive as well as industrial applications uh, they are they are in different configuration and they have different channels uh, basically uh, right, means, uh, currently we are also introducing a low ohmic switches so sub ohmic uh, uh, switches which has got are on less than uh, 1 ohm uh, currently, we are also for specifically for the industrial application. We are developing negative voltage uh, uh, switches, uh, which operate between minus 12 to minus 4 volt, and has got uh, around approximately 5 5 ohm. And one of the advantage with these negative voltage switches is that they have got almost negligible overshoot which is very uh, re very much required in the many application. Uh, where a high fidelity of the signal is required then we have asynchronous logic which is basically used when lower drive micro microcontroller signals are not capable of controlling higher load peripheral we have got here buffer transceiver of course gates and decoder multi multiplexer then we have got uh, synchronous interface basically it solves the clock issues uh, clocking issues uh, uh, here and here we have got uh, flip-flop shift register counter frequency divider and uh, speciality logic uh, next slide please now uh, our family is, or, or technology are broadly divi divided into two sections, high voltage family and the low voltage family. High voltage family is basically where VCC max is equal to or greater than 5.5 volt and low voltage family are those technology where VCC max is equal to 3.6 volt. Now, depending upon the supply voltage, propagation delay, output drive current and standby current, they are divided into different family or technology so i will start with the uh, high voltage family so in high voltage family our most popular family is hct <clears throat> which has got output drive capability of uh, uh, of plus minus 8 milliamps and propagation of de delay with the uh, of nine, nine uh, nanosecond it is coupled with uh, it is paired with abt which has combined features of cmos as well as bipolar to achieve very high drive from minus 32 milliamps to 64 milliamps and a high speed with propagation delay of two nanoseconds currently we are also seeing that the lvc family specifically uh, specifically in this uh, <clears throat> Uh, with uh, they are growing their demand is growing in the automotive market specifically because of the speed requirement then we have got cbt family which has a, a propagation delay of 0.25 nanosecond and and has got really low r on and very good for our switches 
and then we have got NP and pick family in the high voltage family they have got very high output drive current and they are mostly dedicated for the shift registers and good in the application where uh, where where uh, high drive current is required in the low voltage family uh, basically uh, as i mentioned earlier vcc max is is equal to is up to 3.6 volt uh, we have got lvc and lvt for the general purpose lo logic then we have got lvc which is second most family in our portfolio we have got M then we have got lvt family which offers very high output drive and is also very fast they are very popular in the back planes now for from the power requirements we have got two families aup and axp family they are pop they are very popular in the battery app operated application and can be very useful in the applications also application like infotainment then we have got abc family uh, which is also among the fastest uh, family and translator in these families are very popular in the automotive industry uh, applications and then we have finally cbt family which are basically used for the used in switches and offer very offer very lowest a propagation delay uh, next slide please now th this is our uh, uh, package portfolio so our package is basically divided into uh, two uh, two parts mini logic and standard logic depending upon the pin counts so the packages which has pin up to 10 pin are in the mini logic and the packages which has a pin up to more than more than 12 is equal to or more than 12 pin they are under this standard logic in many in this version also we have got leaded version as well as well as leaders leadless version so you can see we have got different uh, and wide range wide wide variety of packages for example like if you see one of the our popular package family it is tssop it it, it has it, it is found in 5 6 8 and 10 version in mini logic and 14 16 20 24 and a 48 pin in the standard logic so we have got very wide portfolio of uh, uh, packages and uh, depending upon the uh, depending upon the requirement in the automotive as well as industrial applications can we go to next slide now so in in earlier section i mostly discussed about our uh, wide range of package option which we have but in this section i will narrow down to the uh, automotive uh, preferred packages uh, can you go yeah <clears throat> So, so as you can see in the standard logic, we have got variety of options. We have got TV, SOP, TSSOP, SO packages, uh, and, and we have got variety of pin count options. If we take example here, TSSOP and SO, depending upon the different factors like longevity of the package, miniaturization trend in the industry, and sometimes, uh, and maybe also like uh, uh, Q100 quality, policies uh, we have decided what are the preferred packages depending for the new design out of these total packages can you go to the uh, next slide uh, yeah thank you so in the in the standard logic if you say for in the 14 16 20 and 24 pin count our preferred packages are uh, tssop package and they are generally identified by pw suffix at the end of any devices in 48 uh, or pin we have uh, tssop and tvsop options and when we go to a leadless package generally we have got dqfn packages in 14 16 20 24 pin uh, which are preferred uh, for the new design and one thing i would i would also like to highlight that for the automotive application or the the types which are high, uh, highlighted with dash q100 those types bq uh, bq package has got side available flank option uh, that means they are uh, suitable for the automated aut automated optical inspection next slide please 
So here, a little bit more in detail. So in the right side, you can see the image. There, I have highlighted the dimples, basically, which so they have got side bitable flank. DQFN packages are option uh, are available in 14, 16, 20, 24 pins. They are just basically identified with the suffix BQ, and they have pitch 0.5 mm. And you can see the footprint of of of, of, of DQFN package in different pin options. Uh, Next, next slide, please. So here I will cover more about that uh, about the D, uh, D, D, DKFN side weightable flank. So basically, side weightable flank are created by sawing solderable dimples during the singulations only. And as you can see in the image, that half each dimples are defined in the saw lines during lead frame manufacturing, and these these dimples receive same NIP PDAU finishes as the pad. And when the entire case is attached to the PC, the correct solder wetting will also result in the wetting in the dimple and the formation of uh, fillet. And this will allow the suitability for AOI. So this is how we achieve automated optical uh, inspection. Uh, this is how we enable a AOI for the DQFN packages. Can we go to the next slide? Yeah, then we have got uh, mini logic packages. So mini, as I mentioned earlier, in mini logic, uh, basically we count packages with pin up to 10 pins. We have got different flavor here also. In leaded, we have VSSOP, TSSOP, and TSOP package. And in leadless, we have XS, XSON, X2SON, and XQFN package. Again, depending upon the longevity, uh, depending upon the miniaturization trend, and depending upon the Q100 policy, we have uh, we have uh, proposed uh, preferred packages for the new design. Can we go to next slide? So in this, you can say that for the Pico gate, basically they are the leaded uh, uh, mini logic packages up to 10 pins. In four, five, in five, six, eight, in, in five, six, we have got uh, uh, TSSOP package, which are preferred package. In eight pin, we have T VSSOP package, which is identified by suffix DC. And in 10, in 10 pin, we have TSSOP 10 package, uh, TSSOP package, which is identified identified by suffix DP. And we have recently also launched uh, uh, leadless packages suitable for uh, uh, automotive uh, uh, applications. They are automotive qualified. So you can see here XSON6, SOT1202, which is uh, which has got GS suffix. Similarly, GM's, uh, uh, X, uh, GM package and GS package and GT package in micro pack are automotive qualified and uh, can we go to next next slide, please? And in these uh, these micro pack uh, packages, these my four micro pack, pack packages, as you can see, they are in six pin and eight pin count, and uh, they are available in the different pitch option also. So 0.5 mm and 0.3 mm uh, pitch options. We have enabled approximately 26, 27 uh, devices right now, which comprise of different functions like gate, inverter, buffer, voltage translator, multiplexers. And they are available in uh, three families right now. So AUP, LVC, and AVC technologies. And one of the advantage for this, uh, using these uh, uh, leadless package over the leaded package, for example, if you, if, if, if you, we are using XSON6 instead of TSSOP, we are able to reduce the footprint by 16% uh, compared to TSSOP6. That means you will have that much space uh, available while designing. Uh, and uh, we are seeing a strong attraction for these packages, specifically in the infotainment application or other space constraint application. Uh, can we go to next slide? Yeah, so this was uh, from my side, from uh, uh, family and package matrix. Next point will be covered by Christian. Yes, thank you. Um, the next point is the analog multiplexer application example. In our application group, we are also um, involved in customer support and design in support. And um, some of the, well, let's say, we, we get a lot of um, questions regarding the functionality and the design in, uh, or the, the application um, of our 
of our products and um, some are easy, some other are more sophisticated and uh, this example here shows a bit of a more sophisticated example. Um, maybe we can switch to the next slide. Um, here we can see the 4851 analog multiplexer um, in a customer application um, for an analog uh, sensor network. And um, that's an authentic case that we had with the customer. Um, the switching between the channels um, is a little bit critical because um, if you switch relatively quickly, then uh, you can have a slightly increased transient and charge injection from one channel to another. And this is um, hard to completely attenuate. There's always a remaining charge injection. And uh, then the question is, how much is it and how how can it be uh, mitigated? So in this particular example, we have the um, 4851 in the block diagram and we have a an RC network for an RC um, for each of the channels. And uh, there the problem was that the customer was assuming um, that they have, um, or that we, our device has some uh, leakage current uh, problem. And uh, together with the customer, their measurements and our simulation, uh, we could um, resolve this issue. Um, a bit about the scenario, of course, here the eight to one multiplexing is done, goes to an analog digital converter input. Uh, the requirements are <coughs> five millivolt uh, accuracy. They are using a 12-bit ADC and the time frame, very important. They have uh, in total a time frame of um, one milliseconds to scan all eight uh, inputs and that divided by eight makes 125 microseconds per channel. And that is already um, relatively close, but still doable. Um, yes, the challenge here is that uh, the switching between the channels is caused causing an increased voltage level and there are various uh, opportunities. One is that the external RC network is uh, also contributing to that. And of course, inside uh, the multiplexer circuit, um, there is a, um, a logic decoder for the selection bits. And there's also some logic uh, decoding circuitry, some, some digital logic. And when that is um, uh, switching and is active, that could also induce some um, charge over the uh, inside um, the IC uh, to each of these channels. Um, so the analysis of and, and how uh, the, the way to mitigate this issue was worked out and uh, we can go to the next slide to see further details here. So there was an experiment done um, with the multiplexer, uh, which was that one channel was switching and then the um, voltage, uh, the transient voltage was looked at uh, at another channel to, to see what how much charge is injected. And uh, what we did, we first of all, um, the options uh, you have is either you wait for a certain time and um, until uh, the charge uh, has gone and then sample um, the analog signal. And um, of course that uh, 100 milliseconds is, 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 is quite a short time here in this case. So it can become critical. And the other op opportunity is to configure the RC network. And, and there we did various examples. And here you can see some results. Um, always the top curve is indicating uh, in, in the figure one and in figure two respectively, um, how this uh, injected uh, voltage uh, curve is, is behaving. And here on, on figure one, we can see uh, we have the original um, RC configuration with 33 kilo ohm and 4.7 nanofarad um, coming to an RC constant of 155 microseconds. And there the initial voltage jump is uh, 20.66 millivolt. And that will relax to 14.5 after 50 microseconds and further down to 1054 uh, millivolt after 100 microseconds. And then the um, capacitor was increased and with it also the time constant and then the initial voltage was lower, um, but the decrease was also a bit flatter. So not so uh, quickly. So then we ended up with um, 694 and uh, 5.95 millivolt after 100 uh, microseconds, which is just below the requirements. And, and we did some further analysis. Um, maybe we can switch to the next page. 
Um, the increase um, of the period was done here. So we looked at it um, not only the, yes, the period uh, was increased from 50 to 100 microseconds. And then we again, we're choosing 33 and 4.7 nanofarad. And, uh, but that was not, uh, was still insufficient. We ended up with almost 10 millivolt after 100 microseconds. And then finally the um, reduction of to 15 kilo ohm and 10 nanofarad. Uh, that was probably working and we um, came below 5 millivolt again after 100 microseconds and uh, finally these values for RC were then also chosen by the customer. Um, the customer did also uh, um, the uh, associated measurements with that and could confirm that it is, was working for him. Um, so we ended up with the conclusion on the next slide please. Um, yeah, the summary. So the cross counts um, were identified as not being the actual cause, root cause for the spikes. And also leakage could be clearly excluded. And uh, so the main reason for the occurrence uh, is charge injection because of the switch action. And there it is most likely um, that the charge is um, caused by the digital decoder network um, when the selection bits are kind of active. Um, so the possible uh, ways to improve is, uh, yes, either built-in delay by a software that was done by the customer and uh, with the simulation results, they could also um, get a certain feeling for, um, for the timing behavior um, of the charge injection. And then the RC network was also slightly um, reconfigured, although it was primarily or initially specified by the OEM. Uh, the 4851 does also have a nice feature, which is the protection of um, injection current control. And, um, but this is mainly referring to, or this is protecting against over voltage, over VCC and under voltage, which is then underground level. So positive and negative um, over and under voltage um, is being mitigated by, um, by that protection circuitry. Um, uh, in this particular case here, it did not, oh, it was not needed, um, but it would have taken effect uh, in case of um, over overshoots of the voltage. Yes, that's uh, it for this section here. And that brings us to the conclusion of our first session today on logic and industrial automotive applications. With that, thank you for all your time today. I thank you to my audience, to all my presenters.